Oklahoma State or Texas will be bringing this hardware home. And we are about to find out who. The Cowboys beat Baylor. Baylor's second loss of the season. And that puts the Pokes in the title game against Texas, who squeezed past Texas Tech a one-point win Thursday. Then a positive COVID test for Kansas put them in the title game tonight. Welcome to Kansas City. Bob Wachus in here with Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rose. So glad you can be part of what really is a season-ending celebration for one of the best, if not the best, basketball conference in college this year. Fran, it's been an amazing Big 12 season and emblematic of this season, Oklahoma State. Look at the run the Cowboys have been on of late to get to this opportunity. We've had ranked teams all season in the Big 12, but this team in 19 days beat six top 25 teams they were not ranked before they are ranked now and they're climbing and joey lenardi loves them as well why why Cade cunningham has been as good as advertised he will clean up more hardware in one year than home depot more importantly he has empowered his young teammates to become stars of their own as well and holly this cast that Cade cunningham has had the chance to leave and did not that's right. Think back to June 5th when the NCAA announced a postseason ban as part of sanctions against a coach who was no longer with the program. It is under appeal, but Mike Boynton said at that moment he did not know what kind of roster he'd even have this season. Of 13 possible players who could stay, 11 chose to stay and be true. They believed in Mike Boynton and this program, including a future lottery pick in Cade Cunningham. They started the season unranked, not knowing whether they'd get to play, and here they are in March competing for a championship. Not only that, the appeal is still being heard, so they have their plane tickets tomorrow to go to Indianapolis. The belief and faith of these kids has paid off, and here they are ready to compete for a title in the Big 12 championship game against a Texas team, Fran, that goes as their guards go. Yes, started out with a Maui Invitational Championship. It's been a COVID roller coaster for the Longhorns, a terrific athletic front line, but the three guards have been through adversity over four years, and man, are they playing well, winning five of their last six coming into tonight. The championship game is underway, and it begins with a highlight. Kate Cunningham to M.A. Moncrief. What a way to get it started. Give Moncrief credit. He went right to the rim. Ramey down low. That could have been a dunk for Jericho Sims. Two big plays at the rim to get things started. Shot clock winding down. Picks up his dribble. He will repost on Jericho Sims. Three to shoot. Up, under, and in. In the last meeting, that young man had 22 and 15 boards. He's continued to come into his own. Caleb Boone. Bob zoned by Texas. Excuse me, Oklahoma State. Last night, every possession but the first one, they were in zone. Shot fake by Andrew Jones. Gives it up to Sims. Stripped away by Cunningham. And recovered in the corner by Munkry. You talk about empowering. They're going into Boone again. Anderson. Tough shot. Swatted down by Kai Jones. Munkry. He traveled. Right off the tip, watch M.A. Moncrief. You know Kate Cunningham's going to find him if he's open. Watch, watch Moncrief. He just takes off and gets rewarded for his hustle. Nice job. Is that a set play off the tip? I couldn't tell, Bob, but I know once Kate has the ball, you'd be a smart teammate to just run to the rim if you're a big fella. Coleman, a step back. Way up in the air for an offensive rebound. Kai Jones trying to wrestle it away and gets it to Sims. Go 
Jones from the corner. That's no good for three. Jericho Sims runs it down. Sims to Jones. Kai Jones. Plus the foul. Kai Jones did a tremendous job right there of keeping that pivot foot anchor. Watch the pass from Jericho Sims. Just watch his pivot foot as he picks it up. He anchors it, doesn't travel, and softly puts it in. That's really well done. Continued growth from that sophomore from the Bahamas. Trap in the backcourt, yeah. and Cunningham has it knocked away. Well, Shaka Smart wanted to make sure his team was set defensively. They watched Oklahoma State race the ball in the first half last night against Baylor, and that pace changed that game. It did. 15 fast break points for Oklahoma State against a good Baylor defense. A point of emphasis at practice today. Get back. And getting back in the passing lane, nearly getting a steal was Andrew Jones. It seems like Texas's antennas collectively are up a little bit more than Baylor's were last night for the early pace to be expected. Yeah, I agree. Baylor played that first half in quicksand. Cunningham short. And Kai Jones clears. Coleman threw it back out to Ramey and almost handed it to Bryce Williams, but his back was turned. Ramey throws it away. Ramey knew that Coleman was coming out of the corner, but he just misfired. This is an alpha dog backcourt. Jones, Ramey, Coleman. Lots of experience, some of it good, some of it not so good. Watch the post up here by Cunningham. Cunningham off a curl. Hits from the foul line. And a steal. Bryce Williams read the entry pass, and he connects for two more. What the zone does is it should keep penetration out of the lane. Coleman with a soft shooter's roll. They'll have to make that three ball because the zone keeps those three guards from driving to the paint. Cunningham a step back. Pace for the Longhorns. Kai Jones fouled by Cunningham at the rim, but the fast break puts him at the line. Jericho Sims just mindlessly throwing the ball in like he's done a thousand times this season. And watch Bryce Williams, the transfer from Ole Miss. Gets an easy one. The freshman Greg Brown is up off the bench. Normally a starter, but he had a little bit of a meltdown in the Texas Tech game on Thursday night. And as a result, Kai Jones got the start today. Man, your take on this, Fran, on Thursday night for Greg Brown? Young player, frustrated. The season has been up and down. Some great moments, some frustration. He's been tagged as a first-round pick, even a lottery pick by some. And he just lost his mind temporarily. And when we talked to Shaka Smart today about Kai Jones starting, we asked him, did it have anything to do with Greg Brown's outburst? He said, yes, it did. Well, both teams have now gone to the bench early, as Ice likely is in as well. Holly? Well, Coach Smart told us that, listen, I want to empathize, help, and work through these things with our young players. But at the same time, make sure that we understand what goes into winning and what doesn't. That did not go into winning as a result, not starting today. But he's very patient, and to his credit, Greg Brown was great at practice today. Well, you can't fall him starting Kai Jones the way he has begun this game, a coast-to-coast -coast layup. at the rim was Boone. Early in the season, it was clear that Kai Jones had become Texas's best pro prospect. 6'11", coast to coast. That's why. 
become very good friends since they both became head coaches here in the Big 12. And we asked them today about the significance of two black coaches coaching against each other in this game. And Shaka Smart quoted the author Toni Morrison and said, sometimes I just want to be known as an author, not a black author. Well, he said, even though that is true, there is significance to us meeting today. We have a great responsibility to show that black coaches can be successful with our programs and set a great example to provide more opportunities for those around us. Mike Boynton said, Shaka has been terrific to me and been a great support. Texted me last night after the win, and these coaches want to be a great example so other coaches can have the same opportunities. And Holly, tonight for the first time in Big 12 history, an African-American is the referee, Keith Kimball, the Waco native, who has officiated in the Final Four. He's in control tonight of a Final Four crew with John Higgins and Doug Sermons. When these two teams played back in February, an epic double overtime thriller at Oklahoma State won. Caleb Boone had his best game of the year, a double-double with 15 rebounds yes. in that game. Five blocks as well, Bob. It, that's the flowering of this young guy, in part because of Cunningham, who has empowered all of his young teammates to be great. Shot clock down to seven. Ramey forces one up. And there, on cue, is a swat by Caleb Boone. Frustrated with himself early in Big 12 play, Mike Boynton had a talk with him and said, you can sulk, but we need you. And he has responded magnificently. When you play with Cunningham, Bob, he not only gives you the ball in the right place, he empowers you on the defensive end. And one of the Boone twins, his brother also playing well down the stretch. Four on the timer. So this will be a quick trigger for Texas. Brown didn't realize it. A shot clock violation. And Jace Febris says to the freshman Greg Brown, shot clock, yep. have to be aware. Well, that's part of the maturation process. He, uh, he's a very talented, athletic young man. He just is still learning how to play the game. And nice. Laboon's back door. Yep. Easy two for Rondell Walker. And right by Greg Brown again. Ty Jones steps inside for two. Way up in the air goes Brown and almost tipped it home. Boone with a size advantage. Ice likely off the feet from Boone. It's amazing. They were working on that footwork today at practice with all their big guys for about 15 minutes. And you saw it manifest itself right there. A big guy who's educated his feet. Jones thought about it, decides to try it. Good decision. It's obvious, Bob, this young man's potential. The athleticism, the end-to-end -end ath athlete running in that right there. Cade Cunningham for three. That rims off. Drew Jones drives it, and he'll go to the free throw line. Watch Caleb Boone now. We're talking 6-9 right here. And you see off of a little pressure, he's going to turn, pivot, and the back cut behind Brown by Rondell Walker. And here's another example right here, the footwork we talked about and the pass to Likely. That foul on Kate Cunningham, his second... He picked up his second early last night as well. Mike Boynton sat him down for maybe three or four minutes, but then put him back in the game, and he avoided picking up his third for the rest of the first half. And he's not making a move right now, even with Cunningham, to give him a break. He's going to stay on the floor with two. Well, remember, they have played without Cade Cunningham a number of times this year. Three to be exact. And last week in Morgantown, they were without Likely and Cunningham and still won the game. So... Great to see him out there, the confidence, but they can play without him as well.
Cunningham across the lane. Bernard Kuma tries to dig it free and does, but then traveled. Watch this pressure now. It's soft pressure, 2-2-1. Two, two, that means they're always going back, usually to the zone, because the 2-2-1 two, two, becomes 2-3. Two, it's very easy. Brown will try a three. Just about banked it in. Avery Anderson. And then that's pulled down by Jericho Sims. Coleman, like lightning, coast to coast. I want to see more of that from him. I think he has to get downhill all night long. Trying to post Febris with Cunningham, but they don't see it yet. Anderson, bailed out by Walker. Here's Cunningham for a triple. A long rebound. 50-50 ball, and it ends up with Coleman. Saves it. Kuma got a hand on it, and he's got it. Anderson swoops in. Challenged by Sims. Jericho Sims took it away. Unbelievable verticality right there. You're not jumping over him. Brown goes to the front of the rim and draws a foul on Kuma. Nope, check that. That's a charge. They just got Greg Brown for an offensive foul, saying Kuma was in position. This is some kind of start in Kansas City. Out the athletic Texas front line. Take a look right here. Watch Jericho Sims. This is verticality, completely legal. Tremendous athleticism. And then watch the energy of Greg Brown. This is a charge right here. But the young man, after being frustrated the other night, has certainly come out playing hard. You see KT Turner, the associate head coach, still talking to him. And again, it's a work in progress for a young man that down the road someday will be a tremendous NBA player. Avery Anderson has the ball. He's been red hot end of the season, end in this championship. He and Cade Cunningham so far have combined for only two points, and yet... Cowboys only down by five. Here's Anderson on the move. And he will go to the free throw line to try to get on the board. Champ Week rolls on next right here on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. The New York Life ACC Championship game between Georgia Tech and Florida State. And then we cap off a great triple header in Vegas with the Pac-12 Championship game presented by New York Life. Oregon State, Colorado. Both games on ESPN and the app as we've got three consecutive major conference championship games back to back to back. Wayne Tinkle's crew at Oregon State trying to steal a bid from somebody else. Bryce Williams back in as Avery Anderson goes to the bench. This has the feel, Bob, of a, of a 15 round fight. Right now, they're just jabbing back and forth. This is a neighborhood brawl because these teams know each other so well. All these teams that head to the tournament are going to be relieved when they play somebody that doesn't know all their tendencies. NCAA tournament. There's that zone. Ramey. That's a big shot for Courtney Ramey. He was 0 for 5, 0 for 3 from 3 on Thursday night against Texas Tech. Did not score. And he needed to get off to a good start tonight and has. Williams from the corner rims it out. Well, guys, keep in mind, Texas had yesterday off after their Kansas game was suspended for a COVID test that was positive. But Oklahoma State's tempo and pace really gave Baylor problems yesterday. Just curious, Fran, if you think they can keep up that tempo and pace. We're just not seeing it as much. Great yeah. example right here. Cunningham not pushing it there. Two sides of the coin, Holly. The, on the one hand, Oklahoma State's in the rhythm from playing a couple nights in a row. But at the end of a long season, having a day off in between, I think is the bigger advantage. Cunningham, an easy two with all the attention he draws. It's another layup for Rondell Walker. Absolutely, and three times so far, Texas's back line defense has been back cut, giving up those easy baskets. 
Ramey. That hit the backboard first. Here's a chance for the Pokes to run. Spotting up, Williams. The long rebound. It's going to be taken the other way by Ramey. He'll lob one. Intercepted at the rift by Williams. But he throws it to midcourt. There's Jericho Sims waiting. Andrew Jones. Off to Jericho Sims. I love that kid. Most improved player in the league besides David McCormick. But I love how he's improved. Mike Boynton calls timeout. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Of a double double against Texas Tech, Jericho Sims continues to impact. We've seen it on the defensive end, and he's going to shoot about 75% inside the arc. You, you get him to the rim, and it's over. Well, Fran, you said he's the most improved other than David McCormick. And take a look at this. The pictures from his freshman year to his senior year. He has transformed his body. He already had a terrific frame, but look what he's done with strength and conditioning coach Andrea Hootie. This young man has a beautiful frame, and he's really learned how to use it this year. He's already made some terrific, strong plays here. We're seeing that great improvement. Yeah, and I think confidence, Holly, is a big thing with young big guys. We've watched him over four years be somewhat inconsistent. This year, outstanding, and a great defender at five positions. Sims with four points, and already five rebounds here in the first half. Anderson picks up his dribble. Here's Ice Likely. Muscles one inside, and he'll go to the free throw line. Bob, Texas fans are glad to see Chase Febris back after micro uh, fracture surgery. And we saw the big night the other night. But defensively right now, teams are going at him. And you saw Ice Likely recognize it and just get to the basket with that linebacker build. Cowboy fans are happy to see Isaac Likely back as well. He missed six of the final seven games of the season. Had a foot injury that knocked him out for a few. Then he came back, the first game back, he jammed a finger. It became a separate injury, but he's playing through some pain here at the Big 12 Championship. And as you said, Fran, Ice Likely is everywhere in the box score sometimes, other than necessarily the scoring column. And doesn't care. He really doesn't care. He's about winning, as is Cunningham. And it's empowered this whole team. Kate Cunningham to the bench for the first time. Coleman at the elbow. Got it. That's really good. That's what we call a, a, a little turn there by Sims. Defender went under. Sims rescreened re again. Likely got caught in midair. And now it's Anderson. Caleb Boone. Over Sims with the left hand. That's hard. He is really using that offhand this season. He's on his way to being the all-time career field goal leader at Oklahoma State for one season. Sims goes right at Boone, but kicks it back out to Kai Jones. And he traveled. Slid that pivot foot. Let's go back and watch Jericho Sims set this, what we call a re-screen. The defender will go under. Take a look. And Matt Coleman sees it, comes right back to the rescreen, and that is great coordination between a guard and a big man. Really well done. You know, all the times we've called Texas games, not even just this season, but over the past several years, you always seem to use the barometer for success for Texas as to whether or not Matt Coleman and Andrew Jones are going to the basket. Yes, I, I do, because, Bob, you can play the game from the perimeter in but when you're athletic with that front line, it's better for those guards to get into the paint first, and the three balls will, have, will be easier. Kate Cunningham, that was a brief rest. He's back on the floor, and it's back into the post to Boone. Boone to Boone, as Keelan missed one at the rim after Caleb found him cutting down the lane. That's good. Coleman in the paint to Sims. That's that ball screen again, giving Oklahoma State trouble at the top of the zone. And Caleb Boone down, slow to get up. He bought the fake, and he skied high. And 
he landed with a thud. So we'll keep our eyes on Caleb Boone as he limps to the bench. This is a scary fall. Reggie. Susan, Fran Fraschilla, and Holly Rowe. And moments ago, after being undercut and losing his balance, trying to defend Jericho Sims, Caleb Boone was walking it off behind the bench in the team area for Oklahoma State. And he was able to walk it off. He's staying in the game. Now, here's the mystery. Ice likely just walked back to the locker room for the Pokes. And that was not something that we picked up injury-wise. So we're not sure what's wrong with Ice Likely. We'll try and find out. But right now, he's back in the locker room. And Caleb Boone, who took that nasty tumbles on the floor. And Jericho Sims is at the line. Pressure against a missed free throw. You don't see that often. And Ramey got the steal as Cunningham threw it away. Cade's assist turnover ratio is underwater. He gets sloppy sometimes because he's a high dribbler. Ramey shaking and baking. Back outside to Kai Jones. Shot fake for two. That's in and out. Keelan Boone's got the rebound. Yeah, didn't like that shot by Kai Jones. He, the defender was still on him. Moncrief follows his miss. Well, we got some hard playing young big guys in this game. Oklahoma State, 70% man to man all season in this tournament, a little different. Foul called on Jericho Sims, a shove in the back of, Keelan, of Caleb Boone trying to create space underneath. And Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. The softball and baseball seasons are in full swing. More than 200 matchups are available, along with the early rounds of both conference tournaments. Plus, it's the home for over 500 live events and original content. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. And that's good news for Oklahoma State. As at least Ice Likely is back on the bench. We'll see if he can get back in the game. How about Brock Cunningham in the game guarding Cade Cunningham? Cade Cunningham gets caught behind the backboard. Oh, man. Versus one up. And Brock Cunningham has the rebound. I thought Cade got a little bit of a chicken wing. He got away with that a little bit. Hesitation dribble for Coleman to Sims. That's what I like. I like when Matt Coleman goes downhill. The other thing, he's a lefty, and the scouting report on him is he's a right-handed driver. Good example right there of not knowing the scouting report. Cade Cunningham fades back and connects. That shot right there takes hours of practice. Anybody who's played knows that. Jones. And a blocking foul's called on Cade Cunningham. So that's now his third. That's where he has to just let the Longhorn player score the basket. If I were Mike Boynton when he's out there with two, I'd say, Cade, if you're in a position and you're not sure, let him score. We need you on the court. Don't worry about giving up two points. And the story in this championship, certainly since I've been a part of our broadcast, but going a while back, generally is Kansas and Iowa State. They've dominated the Big 12 championship. So whichever of these two teams ends up bringing home the hardware, it's going to be a story. Because Texas, they have appeared in the Big 12 championship game six previous times. This is their seventh trip, but their first since 2011, and they've never won it. Eddie Sutton was coaching the Cowboys the last time they won the Big 12 championship game. So we're not used to seeing these teams on this stage. That's right. And no Texas team 
to your point, Bob, has ever won a Big 12 tournament title. Brock Cunningham picks the pocket of Anderson and goes in for two. That's why he's out there. He just reached and exceeded his season scoring average. It's not about points with him. It's about toughness and defense and extra possessions on the offensive glass. And Ice Likely, to that point, is back in the game. We got some toughness in this league, man. Likely finds Moncrief. Great pass, great cut by Moncrief. Fourth basket in the first half on backdoor cuts by the Cowboys. Cunningham's good in the middle of the zone and as a screener. A roll off the feed from Coleman, and now it's Ramey. Fading away over Likely. Watch these quick hands now. Didn't play for the first part of last season as a redshirt freshman. He gets into the lineup, plays 18 minutes a game. They go 5-1 and one down the stretch. And every night, there are two or three plays he makes that helps his team win. Bob, including the steal the other night late in the game against Texas Tech on that Shannon drive. Kai Jones was just called for his second foul, and that's the seventh on Texas, so it's a one-and-one one for Boone. Well, if you're looking at Brock Cunningham today, thinking maybe he's wearing some eye makeup, that is not the case. He's got a really good shiner. Shaka Smart sent us a picture of it last night. Um, we're not exactly sure when it happened. Could have been any time because he takes so many charges. He's always diving on the floor for loose balls, but uh, he's probably got a pretty good shiner here today. Oh, and, and Holly, they beat Texas Tech, and it was a street fight, and it had to be. Sims again. Yep. Another terrific feed this time. Courtney Ramey gets the assist. Bob, you see what happens, no matter whether it's zone Owner man, if you can get those guards into the paint, it really creates opportunities. Texas has not settled for threes today. Moncrief. And that time Brock Cunningham was able to take away the miss. How about the steal and came up with it on the baseline? Step back for Jones. Andrew Jones hits a three. Timeout called again by Mike Boynton. Defense, offense, they've got it going. Start now with the big fella, Jericho Jones, Sims, excuse me, throwing it down. I like that Texas is playing down. Now, usually 40% of those shots come from the three. Yeah. Today, only 25. Mm -hmm. They're playing more like Oklahoma State tonight in terms of their aggressiveness off the bounce. Well, since Kate Cunningham picked up his third foul, Texas is on a 9-2 run. Walker tries to break it from the corner and rims out a three. This is the largest lead for the Longhorns. Double figures for the first time. Although it will be free throws now for Oklahoma State as Brock Cunningham picks up a foul. But still, three minutes plus that Oklahoma State friend has to navigate through the rest of the first half, presumably without Cade Cunningham. Can't right. see him coming back in with three fouls. No, no question, Bob. You got to get, get it to a manageable halftime deficit. And a miss by Moncrief on the front end at the line. Look at that. Jones from the wing. That's short. Maybe a little too unselfish. Yeah, and I thought Jones took a tough shot. He faded away, but it was good ball movement. Likely, his pass deflected. Losing his footing is Jones. But able to get the ball back to Jericho Sims. I'll tell you, I, I think Oklahoma State may have to go man soon. Because what's happening is those big guys are setting these screens, like right there, and it's allowing them to get downhill. And Coleman connects. Yep. And we watched it today. That defense really gave Baylor trouble last night. 
Shaka Smart had a great game plan using those big fellas as screeners. Avery Anderson for three. He's still without a field goal. Walker, though, saves it. Boom. And now it's back to Anderson again. There's his first bucket. That's, a, that's an easy one that happened because of great hustle right there. Don't worry, folks. Oklahoma State has battled back from three or four different double-figure deficits. Jericho Sims missed at the rim. Knocked out of bounds by Caleb Boone. Well, Andrew Jones with some hustle plays. Let's remind you of this unique career that he's had. He started off sky high as a McDonald's All-American, really with an NBA future in sight. Got off to a terrific start as a freshman, averaging double figures in that game. But then diagnosed with leukemia, a year and a half battle fighting for his life. This young man came back last season, just finished chemo treatments in December, would practice with a pick line in his arm and a chemo pack on his back. And here he is excelling. Brock Cunningham hits a three, and there's no question. One of the most inspirational stories that we've covered in our careers has been what Andrew Jones has been able to overcome to be on this floor tonight. I, I think his measure of toughness was in his red shirt year, 18-19. Courtney Ramey, I talked to him about this earlier in the year. He said, the guy was on the scout team with a pick line in his arm and a chemo backpack. And that says it all about that young man's toughness. The big men trade buckets. Still a 12-point lead for Texas. We're back in 30 seconds. This ain't a knock on tradition. Nostalgia has its place. This is for a different breed of rider. Chasing what's down the road untraveled. We're not outlaws. We're outliers done sitting in someone else's circle be unlike everyone back in kansas city at the phillips 66 big 12 championship the title game between texas and oklahoma state it's a 12 point lead for the longhorns oklahoma state has yet to make a three. They are 0 for 8 from behind the line. And Kate Cunningham picking up his third foul. That proved to be a line in the sand that was very much taken advantage of by Texas. Let me remind you, my friend, eight different times this year, Kate Cunningham has gone for 17 or more in the second half. So I'm excited to see how he bounces back. I have to think that'll be a message sent at that time. By Shaka Smart as well. This game is a long way from over as likely gets it to Anderson. Anderson double team goes down. Brock Cunningham takes it away. Here comes Andrew Jones. Pulls up. And that was blocked from behind. I think likely got a piece. Good matchup. You talk about two tough guys. Ramey and Likely. Down to the final eight seconds of the first half. Likely tries to turn the corner. Keelan Boone. That three won't go. Anderson flips it up and in. Oklahoma State ends the first half with a bucket, and it's a 10-point advantage for Texas at the break. Texas has got it done on both ends of the floor. The bigs have been involved. Guard plays excellent. And they have shadowed Cade Cunningham into three personal fouls. Texas at one point led by 14. That was their largest lead, and that was when Cunningham was on the bench as we check in with Holly. Coach Smart, tell us the importance of Jericho Sims really inserting himself in this game early with a dominant spirit. Well, he's doing a great job around the basket, rebounding first of all. And then catching and finishing is a huge key. Our guards are doing a good job getting them involved, pick and roll. We just we got to continue to rebound. We can't give them second opportunities. How do you clean up some of that defense? They got you a few times on the backdoor cuts. Well, you know how it, we're trying to really give help on the ball handler. Uh, along with that, they're going to do some cutting. So we got to make sure we have vision of man and ball. And then if we do get beat, just rotate and help each other. Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks, Shaka Smart's team's got a 10-point lead. The Big 12 championship game. 
A second half coming up after we head to the studio for the Audi halftime report. Jericho Sims. Nine points and seven rebounds at the break with Seth and Lafonso. Here's Reese Davis. All right. Set for the start of the second half of the championship game between Texas and Oklahoma State. And it's the Longhorns that have the 10-point lead. Bob Oshusen here with Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe is with us as well. And Fran, you talked about this at the outset. Whichever team did a better job of attacking the other, especially with their guards, was going to have a major advantage. Well, that certainly was a theme in the first half. Texas attacked, and Jericho Sims made it pay off. And it starts with defense, Bob, first. Take a look at Jericho Sims, already close to a double-double. Tremendous defender at the rim, but that he gets rewarded numerous times in the first half on the other end by those terrific upperclassmen guards who got into the paint and rewarded the big fella and throw in a couple steals and assists as well. And let's take a look at Shot Tracker and where the Longhorns did most of their damage in the first half. It was right at the rim. Not bad. Shoot 82% at the rim because you got guys like Brown, Sims, and Jones flying around. Well, guys, at shoot around today, Shaka Smart had his Texas team gather together underneath the net and look up at the net, look up at the basket, and say, visualize this. In seven hours, I want you to be cutting down this net. It's something they haven't done under his tenure at Texas. But to do that, they have got to contain what he calls the runs of Oklahoma State. He said last time we played them, they would go on these big runs, 14-2 to in that double overtime loss. They have to contain that to cut down those nets today. Traveling called on Andrew Jones, and of course, Cade Cunningham back out to start the second half, playing with the three fouls. It's amazing. In the first half, Oklahoma State as a team only committed five total fouls, but three were on their best player. And keep in mind that first possession, Mike Boynton has gotten out of the zone to go man to man. Strong drive of the left hand finish by M.A. Moncrief. Take a look now. Locked in man to man. Keep in mind that they are usually a man-to-man -man team, although in this tournament, the zone has been very effective. Sims an offensive rebound, and Cunningham cannot foul him. He puts it back up, rolls it off the rim, tries again, and throws it down the second time. I got to check, but that might have just got him his double-double, in, in part because he got three rebounds on one play. Cunningham forces the issue at the other end. And he will do that, Bob. He is a second-half player. Usually this season, he's been slow to get going. He wants his teammates involved, but he knows when to take over. Avery Anderson was quiet in the first half as well. This time out of control towards the rim and turned it over. Let's take a look. I mentioned last five games, he is averaging 17 points a game in the second half and in overtime, and you see he's got a sense for when to be the player that we've all seen him be this season. Lots of hardware coming his way in one year at Oklahoma State. Now, if I'm Shaka Smart, I go with Cunningham. Foul called on Avery Anderson, who left his feet. I, I love that they're going inside the Sims. It's the right thing to do, but Cunningham's got three. He's not going to foul in the first 10 minutes of the second half. So if you get an isolation situation with one of those guards on Cade, like right now, get it to Jones and let him play one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, ice likely. He grazed Courtney Ramey. And the Cowboy fans not happy with that call. Sims puts it up and in. Yep, and he did a terrific job again of anchoring that pivot foot. The, the remarkable transformation of this kid over four years is awesome. He will be playing basketball after he leaves Texas. Just take a look at these young big guys. We've seen both ways tonight. What Jericho Sims would not have done this even as a junior. He takes Boone down, anchors the foot, and finishes through contact because he is, as Holly Rowe pointed out, really developed that massive frame.
Cunningham for three. There's a big one. That's the first made three of the game for Oklahoma State. Coleman off balance, and the floater is good. Matt Coleman's been quiet, but in some ways he's been as big in second halves as Cunningham has been as this year. Ramey reaches in on Cade Cunningham. And a little bit of a Bronx cheer from the Oklahoma State fans as they finally sense a touch foul went their way. Double team. Bullets one to Anderson. Knocked away by Brock Cunningham. That kid is everywhere. Always. Ramey steps back. Matthew Alexander Moncrief the other way. Anderson's the trailer. And he is fouled on the floor by Brock Cunningham. Watch. Watch Brock's hands now. He gets feet on the baseline. That's great basketball. That might show up as a steal, but believe me, he doesn't care about stats. Kai Jones checks back in for Texas. And he will replace Ramey, so a bigger lineup on the floor now for Shaka Smart. They want Cunningham in the post, but the pass is overthrown. But you're not going to score on Cunningham, Bob. If you post Cunningham, Cunningham's not going to let you score. <laughs> Step back for Coleman. In and out. And Caleb Boone is able to find the loose ball. Ice likely. Blocking foul is called. As Matt Coleman tried to get in front of Ice Likely and take a charge. That's team foul number three on Texas. Here comes that linebacker downhill, and in the, in the opinion of the officials, Matt Coleman was not set. He's got to brace himself. That is one tough point guard who, by the way, averages seven rebounds a game. How about a point guard that's in the top five in rebounding in a Power Five league? That's Ice Likely. How about your two point guards are 6'8 and 6'5? Cunningham for three. Jericho Sims comes the other way. Kai Jones will pull it back out. First time I've seen this year, Sims and Jones on the break. Matt Coleman in rhythm. Matt Coleman. What a season he's having as he leaves as, as a senior. Brock Cunningham throws the reverse attempt by Likely out of bounds. Matt Coleman has essentially started every single game he's played for Texas. At times a bumpy road, but the last couple of seasons, as Texas has turned the corner, he's been tremendous. And he'll grab a little bit of a rest here as we are just about to get to the under-16 timeout. Chase Febris coming back in as well. He'll replace Andrew Jones as Ramey jumped back in for Coleman. Moncrief puts it out, puts it in, plus the foul. Cade Cunningham being held back by Caleb Boone as well. A lot of high-level intensity, Bob. Watch M.A. Moncrief, the young man from Toronto. You talk about energy, excitement inside. He gets the job done. Had a very good freshman year this year. The two-time Canadian High School Player of the Year at Orangeville Prep. This past summer, when he got over the border from Canada, he spent the summer with Cade Cunningham and his family in Dallas, and they really connected. Brock Cunningham and Cade Cunningham both got into it under the basket on the Moncrief bucket. And teammates held Cade Cunningham back as he was ready to go nose to nose with Brock Cunningham as these teams go nose to nose for a Big 12 title.
Ramey to Sims. Diagonal to Febris. The quick trigger. Off the mark. Offensive rebound, Sims. How about his effort today? He's got that double-double now. 13 points and 10 rebounds. Ramey. That pass finds its way eventually to Sims. And he'll find his way to the free throw line. The intensity picking up. 51-43, Texas on top. Would you expect anything else in a Big 12 title game? Yeah, February 6th, one of the best games of the year in the Big 12. A double overtime thriller. Andrew Jones had 17. Caleb Boone, a double-double. 22 points and 15 rebounds. He was tremendous. Courtney Ramey had 13 for the Horns. In overtime, Caleb Boone and Cade Cunningham. They took over. Cunningham scored five of his 19 in the second overtime. He made three threes, the double-double from Caleb Boone. He was the player of the game. And OSU survived in two overtimes to win it 75 to 67. December 20th, Texas won a close one by three when Greg Brown, the freshman, had a big double-double. So they went back and forth. That's Fran, kind of emblematic of the entire Big 12 season that we had a chance to watch. Exactly. In that second game, in the double overtime game, Texas went 0 for 10 in both overtimes. And Cade Cunningham, to your point, once again, magnificent down the stretch. Speaking of double doubles by big men in games between these two teams that have been impactful, Jericho Sims has one working 13 points, 11 rebounds, and you know, Shaka Smart talked to us about the development of Jericho Sims. So, like, he came in with the same class as Mo Bamba. His sophomore year, Jackson Hayes was a freshman. So there's this idea that if you're not a one-and-done NBA draft choice, somehow you're a failure. He's traveled his own road. And look at the player he's become by staying for four years at Texas. And now he's on pace to graduate as well. Exactly. You say travel your own road. We say run your own race. You don't have to be a one-and-done guy. In his case, he's such a late developer. He's just getting on NBA radars. You'll see him in the mock draft the next time these guys, the various outlets, put their drafts together. He can, I've had a few friends tell me in the league, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> you just did. I know. You violated all their trust. Can't believe it. Cade Cunningham. I think everyone knows about him. And he's fouled hard by Greg Brown. So Cade Cunningham to the line. And he's fouled by his former grassroots AAU teammate. Teammates on the Texas Titans out of Dallas. They hooked up many times, won many tournaments. regular season, Kate Cunningham averaged 19.7 points per game overall, but 20.1 points per game in conference play. So as the competition got tougher, his production even ticked up a bit, led the conference in overall scoring, and naturally as well led the conference in conference scoring as well. And that's why he's one of four freshmen in the history of this league. The other three pretty good to be player of the year in the league and freshman of the year. Durant, Beasley, and Marcus Smart. Brown. And it looks like he may have fouls. The SEC tournament continues. Alabama beat Tennessee 73-68. LSU over Arkansas 78-71. So that leads us to our championship game tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Alabama LSU for the title in the SEC. Courtney Ramey was called for that last foul. His second, so a chance for Oklahoma State to draw closer. There's that matchup again. Cunningham and Cunningham. Watch the step back. He's got another three. Cade Cunningham cuts the lead to four. And now it's Shaka Smart's turn to call timeout.
Cade Cunningham, Cunningham of Oklahoma State is starting to heat up. He's got 14 points. And guys, one of the reasons he's heating up from three is they have been begging him all season to take more three-point shots. They use this technology on the bench. It's called the Shot Tracker. This app that coaches are allowed to use on the bench this season gives them instant info. They know that Cade is so effective from three-point range, and so they're showing him constantly, please take more of these shots. And he's heating up right there. You see his heat map. The only place he's hotter, 50% on the right wing. Don't be shocked to get him see some shots from there as well. Now, if that shot tracker is a Cade Cunningham hurricane, he shot it from the eye of the hurricane, right? Shoot those threes, get to the top of the key. He just did, and it's a four-point game. I love the analytics of the shot tracker, but my basketball brain says, doesn't matter anyway, give him the ball. But it's, it's a helpful tool, no question. Coleman forces the issue. That's blocked by Anderson. It's hard to tell on TV, Bob, but it does sound like a full house in here. Watch downhill. There's Coleman and a nice play by the sophomore guard, Anderson, who continues to make an impact for this team. Sims fouled by Moncrief. It's not a bad foul by Moncrief because as good as Sims has been tonight, remember he's a 50 or so percent free throw shooter. This is a young man as a freshman shot his free throws left-handed. Right-handed a little bit better, but it's certainly something he has to keep working on. Texas has now missed four free throws as a team. Sims has three of the four misses. That could be a factor in the final five minutes of this game. He misses another. Likely turns. Does not get the roll. Brock Cunningham another rebound. Deflected. Rondell Walker glides in, lays it in. Two point game. I didn't like that Matt Coleman turned it over and then looked at his teammate like, your fault. He can't be that way as a senior. Jericho Sims trapped under the basket. That ball tips and recovered by Ramey. He'll try a three. It was knocked out. And they will say it went off of Oklahoma State. Not to get Matt Coleman. He turns it over and he stops. And that allows Rondell Walker to get out one-on-one -on -one in the open court. He's too experienced to do that. Got to have amnesia. Looked like that last ball may have been knocked out by Sims. Texas got a break. Shot clock under 10. Spin cycle for Ramey, but he missed the layup. Moncrief the rebound. Avery Anderson to Likely. And he saw Sims lurking. Yep. Did not buy the shot fake and wisely backs <laughs> it out. That's called a high IQ move right there by Likely. Moncrief. Rock Cunningham another rebound. Oh, watch Walker. He's sneaking in there again. Jones left alone in the corner. This is the three. Offensive rebound, Jericho Sims. Shot clock down to eight. Ramey drives it. Cunningham, reverse. That's oh, man. Wow. I thought Ramey should have shot that ball because he got by... Cunningham, Cunningham was not going to foul him and pick up the fourth. Attack Cade Cunningham with his foul issues. He's got three. And he's hunting his shot here. Spins in the lane, comes up short. Take a look on this half-court set, Bob. Who is Cade Cunningham guarding? Now, smart. It looks like he's guarding Brock Cunningham, not a one-on-one -on -one player. Good job by Boynton.
Tough assignment for Moncrief as he's hand fighting as best he can with Jericho Sims. He gets called for a foul. What a day for Brock Cunningham. He gives you the effort on the defensive end, and this is a bonus today. This guy's heading towards double figure scoring. You don't expect that, but you'll take it if you're Shaka Smart. Anything to win a title. Kansas, of course, is the Big 12 tournament dynasty. They've won 11 times in the championship game. Iowa State, their recent run of success, five titles. Oklahoma State, they do have two Big 12 championship game titles. They have not been in this game nor won it, though, since 2005. Texas was in the Big 12 championship game in 2001, 4, 6, 7, 8, 11, and now. And they have never won the Big 12 championship game. A big three is knocked down by Coleman. So that is what the Longhorns are fighting for. History. They want to bring this hardware home for the first time in school history. As likely cruises in for two. What I like about this Texas team, and they showed it against Texas Tech, I've called them in the past a country club team. They've become street fighters. They've got toughness. And they can show it over the next 10 minutes if they want that first title. Sims spins. Nice shot fake by Sims. Someone's worked with him. It started with Darren Horn, who's no longer there, the coach at Northern Kentucky. But Texas does a really good job with their big kids. You think of Bamba and Allen, Jackson Hayes. How about this improvement of Sims? Kay Cunningham tried to tip it out to the wing, and it's a turnover. Coleman has it poked away from behind. But it's out of bounds. Off of Rondell Walker, so it goes right back to Texas. Well, the walls are come, come tumbling down tonight for the Cowboys because of this guy, Jericho Sims. How about the footwork right here and the up and under terrific move? You can just see the athleticism, Bob. He knows who he is. That's what you like about him. He's not shooting threes. He's not putting it on the floor in the open court. He rebounds, he blocks shots, he catches lobs, and he's a great defender at all five positions. This might be the best game he's played this year. It's his fourth double-double on the season, but considering this stage, Coleman, that close to a three-point play opportunity. As Matt Coleman will go back to the line. He's at his best when he gets the ball and starts heading to the paint. There he comes. He can go left to your righty. Lucky right there for the Cowboys. That's not a three-point play. Matt Coleman was first recruited by Shaka Smart to VCU when he was in eighth grade. So it's a long history between the coach and player. It goes back to junior high for Matt Coleman. You remember Briante Weber, who was basically a one-man havoc, right? For he grew up in the Tidewater area. He this kid idolized Briante Weber, who was probably the second guy that you associate Shaka Smart with, besides Matt Coleman. Moncrief, by the way, now has four fouls. A lob, and the finish by Boone, plus the foul. What a look from Lincoln. Absolutely. Kate. Uh, Kai Jones got caught helping too much. He's got to retreat quicker. Watch his man get behind him. No, you got to keep backing up and make Likely shoot a floater. When you commit to Likely, there's no way Matt Coleman can stop that. That's Coleman's second foul. And Boone now has 10. Both teams are now out of fouls to give as well. So we shoot free throws the rest of the way. Jace Febris hand checked by Rondell Walker. So that will put Jace Febris at the line for a one and one. Coming up on Selection Sunday. Tomorrow at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. 
It's Bracketology with Reese Davis, Jay Billis, Lafonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, Dickie V. They'll break down the brackets. They'll have special guests as well. Sports Center tomorrow starts it off at 515 Eastern. Reese and the guys reveal the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. Well, when they break it down, they better break down the fact that unlike other years where the Big 12 sends six or seven, but their higher seeds, all seven can get deep into the tournament and take a look at this surge not ranked on February 13th and Joey Brackets has got them all the way up to a two right now right now Joe Lenardi thinks Texas is a three so this is an elite eight potentially even a final four level matchup between Oklahoma State and Texas in the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship game Four fouls now on Kai Jones, so he becomes the first Longhorn player to be in serious foul trouble. And Jericho Sims, he's only got one personal foul. He'll come back in the game. Shaka Smart is telling Kai Jones right now, you don't need to foul likely 30 feet away from the basket. Retreat when he's got the ball. And he misses the front end of the one and one. Coleman sets up Febris. It rolls off the rim. Another rebound for Brock Cunningham. Back out for a Coleman three. That's good. Brock Cunningham might be the MVP of this game. We've talked about Coleman and Sims, but that is how you win games right there. 11 minutes tonight. He's got seven and seven, two steals and two blocks. And that was his first assist. Cade Cunningham. Anderson around Brock Cunningham. Eight to shoot. Likely gets to the front of the rim. I like that. Likely is unstoppable in there when he gets the ball at the top of the restricted arc. Brock Cunningham's like Alex Caruso of the Lakers. That's who he reminds me of. And you know how much LeBron loves him. Jones can't hit the three. Cade Cunningham comes away with it. Gives it up. Anderson with an easy lay-in. What a play at half court. Cade Cunningham acted like he was going to pass it. The defender jumped, and he had a two-on-one. Andrew Jones floats one to Jericho Sims. Five to shoot. He's got to go. Matt Coleman. Behind the back. And Sims couldn't handle the pass. It's a turnover and maybe a little momentum back on the poke side. Just when it seemed like Texas might be taking control of the Big 12 championship game again. Coach on the floor, Cade Cunningham. Does the player of the year have a rally in him in the last seven and a half minutes? We'll find out. Reese, thanks very much. Bob Wischusen here with Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe. 7.40 remaining in the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship game. And as we went to break, a Matt Coleman turnover, and there was a lot of spirit on that Cowboy bench as they're trying to whittle down a seven-point lead. Tried to go one-on-one -on -one out of the timeout, and Andrew Jones said not tonight, or at least not right now. Caleb Boone instead, double team, through the double team, into the corner to Walker. Now Anderson gets into the paint, missed. Boone an offensive rebound, right back up, that won't go. Tipped around by Likely, taken by Coleman. I thought Sims got a piece of that, Bob, on the backside. Looked like an easy layup. Sims. To Jones in the corner. He's shut down on the drive by Boone, but a foul call. I'm going to tell you what's happening tonight. I have never seen Texas go to Jericho Sims more than they have tonight. And that pass out to the corner by Sims allowed Andrew Jones to get to the basket. The confidence in the, the big fella that he can catch it around the rim and score 
has allowed his teammates to get looks like Jones got. Second foul on Caleb Boone. 16 points, 12 rebounds for Jericho Sims. Andrew Jones now has nine. He's got one field goal, a made three. All of the rest of his points at the free throw line. Matt Coleman guarding Cunningham. Here's, look at that guy. Look at Cunningham. Brock Cunningham creates the steal. A coach, you can't, you can't say it enough. A coach appreciates that. Matt Coleman tries a straightaway three and buries it. That's Matt, that's Brock Cunningham creating a turnover and a potential five-point swing, or six. Boone looking for Likely, knocked out by Febris. Take a look now, seven points, seven rebounds, three steals, and changing the game tonight. The young man that sat on the bench for most of his freshman year. Anderson fouls Coleman out past where the NBA three-point line would be, and that'll put Matt Coleman Back at the free throw line, that's Anderson's third. As we head down the stretch, remember the three Texas guards all shoot over 80% from the foul line. And Bob, how about those two free throws two nights ago? Found with under two seconds, Matt Coleman buried two of them to put Texas Tech out of this thing. And to your point, friend, Texas is now 16 of 21 at the line. Four of the five misses by Jericho Sims. So when the guards get to the line, they are perfect. But you're not complaining about Sims, are you? Overall? Let me think about it. <laughs> now, I guess I probably would take 16 and 12 if I were Shaka Smart, even if a couple of missed free throws go along with the double-double. Watch him move his feet. Uh, another back cut. Likely. Back outside, Cade Cunningham for three. He got it. Breakdown by Texas. They got cut watching that uh, ball, and the paint dries, and Cunningham buries it from deep. Cade. Bevers to Sims. Jump hook. Rolls off. Kate Cunningham gets it across to Anderson. Walker in the corner. That's another three. Back to back. Oklahoma State triples. And they're right back in it. Shaka Smart calls timeout. We talked about Cade Cunningham being a great player, but empowering his teammates. Here's the first thing. This is the great player right here, 42%. Back cut, kick out, over 40% from deep. The last three is because he got it out of a double team. They swing it up the floor. And when you talk about your best player recognizing that we have an advantage, that I have confidence in my teammates, that's why this team is so good. There you see, 17 points a game in the second half in his last five, probably five of the most important games of their season. And right on cue, he delivers. Now the question is, can Oklahoma State get some stops for the game? Texas is shooting 49% from the field. We've seen this play out multiple times so far. Oklahoma State makes a push, gets close, got within two. Multiple times in this game, Texas has had double-digit leads. Well, the other question for Shaka Smart is you got Kai Jones, who's an athlete on both ends. He's got four. When do you bring him back? Because I think he can help. 
Matt Coleman is working on a career-high 26-point night as well. He and Sims have been the offense, and Sims will go to the line, and that will foul out Moncrief. That's probably a good thing for Texas, but remember, that puts Sims back on the free-throw line. Yeah, M.A. Moncrief doesn't realize it, but he's done. I'm not sure he realized he had four. Well, he's going to be told now. So M.A. Moncrief fouls out. NCAA March Madness begins Thursday with the first four. 5 and 8.30 Eastern on True TV. And it's 6.20 and 9.50 p.m. Eastern on TBS. Every game of the tournament is on TBS, CBS, TNT, and True TV. Or stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. Well, guys, March Madness is already in full force for these teams. Obviously, they are not leaving here to go home to their respective campuses. They will stay here in Kansas City tonight, and then the winners and losers already have their flight times tomorrow. Several teams did stay here, Baylor, um, Kansas, to name a few. So people want to get to that NCAA bubble in Indianapolis safe and sound. And we're just so thankful we've made it all the way through the season and have a chance to call this game tonight. Without a question, Bob, from day one, I just got joy in my heart watching these guys out here playing and hopefully everybody's staying safe. Likely. Just barely rolls one off the rim and he will shoot two. Brock Cunningham called for the foul. That's his third. Cunningham is their best player. Their, their leader in the locker room is the guy at the foul line. And he had to sacrifice a little bit of that uh, attention because he was becoming a Big 12 star on his own, and it has worked out great. Oklahoma State already over the 10 foul limit. That's the ninth team foul on Texas. So it's the double bonus for both teams here in the last four plus minutes. The lead still at six. Andrew Jones, followed by Sims. Well, it started because Jones gets to the basket, and the three years of leukemia treatment was important, but hip surgery in the spring has made him more athletic. Hey Cunningham, the runner goes. Oh man, how about that? Sims swung and missed at that. Andrew Jones pulls up. That's no good. Anderson. Left alone. He'll try a three. It's an air ball. This is the defining three and a half minutes of Matt Coleman's four years right here. drive it. it rolls off the rim unless they say it is goaltended it was up on the backboard and it was grazed 28 points for Matt Coleman a career high trying to win for the first time in the Big 12 era the championship game for Texas ESPN and guys we know Texas and Oklahoma State they are both going to the NCAA tournament but only one is going to leave Kansas City as the Big 12 champion. And we've got 314 left to decide it. Oklahoma State down by eight. They've got the player of the year in Cade Cunningham. He'll try a three. Swatted by Boone. Taken back by Febris across the line. Not a playmaker, so he needs to get it out of there. And he's fouled. Yep. A reach in by Anderson. There are a couple of seniors that have made huge contributions tonight for Shaka Smart, but this guy at the foul line was a starter last year. Microfracture surgery kept him out of the lineup until January, and he showed up big the other night, 15 against Texas Tech, so that the Horns would advance to tonight. 
37 points though scored in the second half so far by Texas. Coleman and Sims have 30 of now the 38. And both yep. working on career highs. Matt Coleman with 28, Jericho Sims tying a career high with 20. So, boy, what a stage for those two to step up and play arguably their best games. Cade Cunningham backing his way down. Shot fake off the window. Boy, he took it all the way down there and really earned it. But is it enough? Texas is going to use some clock. Matt Coleman tied up. Rock Cunningham bails him out. Eight to shoot. Rock Cunningham tried to float one. Boom, blocked it, took it away. Uh, and then Brock Cunningham yep. commits the foul. So Kayla Boone with the clock stopped. A chance now to score at the other end. They did a great job of keeping the ball from Coleman. So Brock Cunningham takes it inside and the ill-advised foul right here. You realize we have a lot of basketball left. Caleb Boone needs these free throws. 64% during the regular season. And he is 2 of 4 tonight. Both teams over the 10 foul limit. So again, it's the double bonus. Here Kai, comes. Kai Jones with the four fouls back in for Brock Cunningham. Got to have him in. You, you, milk, you milk, milked Brock Cunningham. Shaka Smart having a conversation with him. Jones gives you the same defense, but he can also get you offense. Two at the line for Caleb Boone. Oklahoma State has it back down to six again. Coming up on two minutes to go. I like what the old point guard Mike Boyne is doing. He's keeping the ball from Matt Coleman with Rondell Walker. Look at this. Jones lost it. Anderson. Goes at Sims. And lost it out of bounds. What a play. And you won't see that kid smile very much. One of the most soft-spoken players that Chaka Smart has ever had. Here's the drive and the steal. And watch Jericho Sims. Measure it. And Anderson loses it out of bounds. The officials went to the monitor and quickly confirmed the call. And Jericho Sims didn't come anywhere near touching that basketball. He just used his height, stayed vertical, and Avery Anderson lost possession. Oklahoma State can put some pressure on you. And Shaka Smart's got the ball to Coleman, but here comes a double team. Likely backs off. Coleman across the timeline. Yeah, I would use 10, sec 10 more seconds here and then let Matt Coleman go to work. Coleman recovers. Seven to shoot. Now he's in the paint. The floater a little too strong. Kai Jones, an offensive rebound. The kick back out to Coleman. A killer for Oklahoma State. That's why Kai's back in. And now the foul by Avery Anderson. And a chance for a 30-point night for Matt Coleman if he can make two at the line. He recognized clock. He had nothing out front. And he's done this really well all night long. Get to the basket, and there's a big-time rebound by Kai Jones. Avery Anderson is fouled out. What a year he's had. Avery Anderson, the sophomore. We asked Mike Boynton about Matt Coleman today, and he simply said, that shot is smart on the court. That's who that is. Oklahoma State can't take much time. 
They double team Kate Cunningham. He splits it. Fades away. He's got it. And a quick timeout called by Mike Boyden. 102 to go. It's a six point lead for Texas. Shaka Smart had Brock Cunningham in for defense. He goes out. Courtney Ramey comes in for offense. Remember, the three Texas guards are all great foul shooters. A 30 point night for Matt Coleman, a career high. He's had his ups and downs, Bob. When you're the point guard as a freshman and asked to resurrect this program, it hasn't been easy. But the buzzer beater against North Carolina early in the year, he has been the leader of this Texas team that I believe can get to a Final Four. A minute two away for Matt Coleman, his senior season, capping it with a Big 12 championship. We will see Texas 12 times in their history in conference tournaments has gotten to the championship game. You include the Southwest Conference title games that they went to. This is the seventh time they've gotten to the Big 12 title game. They've never won it. A couple of times back in the mid-90s, they won the Southwest Conference championship, but it all too often for the Horns has been disappointment when they've gotten this far in their conference tournament and come up empty, but they're a minute two away from their first ever Big 12 championship game victory. Kate, Kate Cunningham might have a lot to say I, about I that, though, over the, last, say that. the next 62 seconds. Uh, exactly. A minute to end Kate Cunningham. Throw that into the equation. Pressure. The ball is valuable. Foul him. If you do, foul him. You need to foul Sims. Him, but, yep. uh, that's a smart play by Rondell Walker, not only because you need to foul, but also that's by far yep. the least reliable free throw shooter that Texas has on the floor. The Horns have made their last 14 foul shots in a row, but it's been the guards for the most part that have done that. Yeah, keep this in mind if there's a couple of possessions like that, because if Mike Boynton, he might have done that on purpose, just leave Jericho Sims open. Double team Coleman and make this guy make his free throws. And he does. Yes, third in a row. Here comes the defense. Out goes Febris, out goes Ramey. One of two. Cade Cunningham can't allow too much time to come off the clock. Here's the three. That deadens against the backboard. Out of bounds off Keelan Boone. Here comes the offense for Shaka Smart. Out goes the platoon, the defense. The ball handlers and the free throw shooters. Yep. And I like this. So, so they're taking Sims out, which is a good move. Nothing personal, Jericho. Keelan Boone to guard Andrew Jones when he throws it in. Oklahoma State now needs a takeaway. It's into Ramey. They'll get him double teamed. Quickly outlets it, and Jones is fouled by Likely, or it would have been a two-on-one at the other end. That was textbook presso right there. That ball stayed off the ground. You catch, you look up the court, good ball movement. These are two extraordinarily well-coached teams, aren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Mike Boynton, kudos to Mike Holder, who only knew Mike Boynton for a year when Brad Underwood left for Illinois. He stayed in-house. He hired a 35-year-old African-American assistant coach with no experience as a head coach in this league. And Shaka Smart, who a year ago at this time was allegedly on the hot seat, he is 42 seconds away from having a team that not only wins this tournament title, but both of these teams can go deep. Cade Cunningham, the floater, in and out. Jericho Sims back in, another rebound. He's tied up, held ball, gives it to Oklahoma State. Over, 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 over. 
you won't find two better people than these two coaches on the sidelines. Two great mentors is what they are, along with being great coaches. Likely puts up a three. That's good. Timeout called by Mike Boynton. It's not over yet. Six-point game with 26.4 to go. Ice doesn't do that a lot, but this year he's shooting over 40%. Small sample size. Two-possession game. Well, guys, Shaka Smart is such an emotional coach. He's constantly trying to mentor and uplift his young team. Every single day he sends out a text devotional. And the devotional today, the quote was, the paradox is that the foundation for greatness is in honoring the small things of the present moment instead of pursuing the idea of greatness. By focusing on the small things today, his team is on the brink of a moment of greatness. He's a mindful coach that is constantly getting the best out of his young men. Well, two things I think that are emblematic of that, Fran, the, the small things. Brock Cunningham, I mean, he was a small things player in this game. The small things created big things. And then how boring is it at the end of practices and shoot-arounds when everybody goes out there and practices their free throws? And yet Texas is 25 of 31 at the lot. Take away Sims. What are they? I'm not good in math. Well, Sims at the free throw line has missed five so he's five of ten the rest of the team with one collective miss at the line and it was kai jones that missed so andrew jones eight for eight matt coleman six for six febris four for four a guard goes to the free throw line and they're automatic well that's good coaching and shock is going to play the platoon game on this second free throw the reason you have sims out there is because he can guard all five positions, and he's their best rebounder. Ramey, this is his first trip to the line, and that's the first time a guard has missed a free throw. Febris out, Jericho Sims back in, and Brock Cunningham waiting at the table. One of two for Ramey. He'll leave and Brock Cunningham is back in. No timeouts left for Oklahoma State. Cade Cunningham, NBA range. Good! Good job. It's a four-point game. It was a late switch. They weren't, they were sleeping. Jericho Sims all alone. Now it's Kai Jones. Plus the foul. Twin Towers, and Sims got rid of it quickly. Watch this. Get rid of it, big guy. Here comes Cade Cunningham down to the last 10 seconds. Now Oklahoma State needs a miracle. Cade Cunningham forces one up. It's another. He's unbelievable. It's a three-point game. 6.6 .6 seconds to go. And they quickly foul Andrew Jones. Is that amazing? First half, he measures the game. Second half, he takes it over wherever he can. His, his basketball IQ, his skill level, his emotional intelligence, his feel for the game is unbelievable. 25 in the second half of his 29. But there's a huge free throw from Andrew Jones. He is now 9 for 9 at the free throw line. And that makes it a two-possession game with 6.3 to go. That should salt it away for Texas. Cade Cunningham, five seconds remaining. He's going to get one more up. It rolls off the rim for the first time ever. Texas wins the Big 12 championship game. Oh, 
Our player of the game brought to you by Phillips 66. You can't just pick one. Not tonight. When both of these guys put career highs up. Matt Coleman outside. And Jericho Sims inside. Deliver a championship for Shaka Smart. Take it away. Matt Coleman, you did something that nobody else has ever done before, win a Big 12 championship here in the tournament, and it took a career high. How were you able to get it done tonight? Man, it's, I'm just so happy for my for my teammates, for Coach Smart, for myself. I'm at, I got tears of joy right now. This is just, it's unbelievable. This is what I came to school for, and it took four years to do it, and we finally got it done. It's, 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 it's incredible. I'm speechless. It has taken four years. There's been some losing years in there, but in this moment, you guys have continued to be patient and build that foundation. What has been important to keep that in mind? I, just, I give all the credit to Coach Smart, man. He's, he's a big culture guy, uh, a big team, a family, togetherness, and, and he, just, he just pushed that in us. And he, he took all the heat for us for four years, and I'm just happy for him because I, I play for him. I've been knowing him since I was in the eighth grade, and I, I'm just so happy, and I, I feel for him, he feels for me. Matt, you were so effective tonight. Not only were you able to drive to the rim and be physical inside, but you were hitting your three-point shots. How was your game so on point man, I just for a came, career I, high? I just came in with a focus, and I just want to win. Like I said two days ago, it, it was the, in front of my mind was winning, um, and whatever it took. And I couldn't do that without the help of my teammates. Uh, without the help of my teammates, I wouldn't be able to get that done. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, Holly Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to cap a Big 12 uh, yeah. season and a Big 12 championship. And, you know, Fran, the larger goal will always be the NCAA tournament. You want to get to a Final Four. You want to get and maybe win a national championship. But, boy, we get the chance to watch this every yes. year and realize how much a conference championship matters to these teams. And the Big 12, Bob, is a league of four-year guys. We watch Matt Coleman grow up for four years. Tune in now for live coverage of the Big 12 Championship Trophy Ceremony on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. For Fran Fraschilla, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew, I'm Bob Oshusen saying so long from Kansas City. Time to head back to the studio. And Reese Davis.